How did they get involved with uh, community service uh, or civic service? So I came to this country as an immigrant with almost nothing. Um, with support of several scholarships and summer jobs, I obtained my uh, bachelor degree in electrical engineering and computer science from UC Berkeley, and also my master degree in electrical engineering from Santa Clara University. I'm very grateful and um, appreciate the opportunities that I have, this country has given me and my family. So I'd like to give it back. Uh, I start actively serving the community since 1993 and 94. Um, it gives me the greatest satisfaction that I can help, serve, and better people's life every day. I'm currently serving also as the president of Silicon Valley Science and Technology Association. I like to uh, encourage and inspire others, special youth, to get involved with community service so that we can all do our part uh, to make a positive impact to the lives of uh, others. Thank you. Thank you, that's great. Um, my name is Rod Sinks. I've served on the city council in Cupertino for about six years now. I'll be done at the end of 2020. And, um, you know, I think civic leadership is about moving the ball forward on big issues. Um, Barry and I have actually worked together for uh, that length of time on uh, getting our air clean, working on tr solutions to gridlock and traffic in the area, uh, working on reducing greenhouse gases. Um, I've served on the Cities Association for my six years. There's one representative from every city and the county. And uh, I'm president this year. Past things we've done are study the minimum wage and then implement, uh, have our cities consider a, a regional implementation. <clears throat> Perhaps the biggest thing is uh, Silicon Valley clean energy. So we uh, are now providing 100% carbon free electricity to 11 and soon to be 12 cities in our county. In Cupertino, that's meant that we've reduced our greenhouse gas emissions by 25% from one year to the next. Um, and so I also uh, happen to serve in the leadership of the Bay Area Air Quality Management District um, that works to constantly improve the quality of the air we breathe and also works on uh, greenhouse gas emissions reductions. I serve on a couple of VTA committees and I'm doing the very hard and long work that Barry knows to uh, see if we can get some more effective uh, transit solutions in our area, uh, particularly in the 85 corridor and the 280 corridor. Thanks. Hi, everybody. My name is Barry Chen. I'm uh, currently on the Cupertino City Council. This is my ninth year. And, uh, Every civic involvement will produce quite a lot of activity if you do it, you know, put your mind to, to, to work. You know, Ryan and I work on getting a very quality management district. If you don't know, in South Bay, number one polluter is Lehigh Southwest Cement Plant between City of Cotino and City of Las Oro Hills. But because our effort, the enforcement criteria was 10 times, so the air hopefully will be 10 times more cleaner for the entire Bay Area, which impact all our health. That's one issue. The other issue is 85 corridor. Um, unless we get involved, the traffic congestion is not going to be solved. So every involvement is very important. Then. Rob mentioned about the Silicon Valley clean energy choice. So we'll cut down the carbon reduction because as you know, um, United States, uh, President Unilever last year pulled out of Paris Accord, which make the whole world don't trust America anymore. Okay. So this is the situation. Don't think of one person don't have much impact, and one person really can have a lot of impact. 
look at what our president does. Okay, every time he tweet, at the three o'clock in the morning, the next morning the whole world is jumping up and down. Okay, so, <laughs> so get involved. Okay, do the right thing. Okay, that's one my my message. Okay, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Andy Lee, and uh, currently a server uh, at the uh, uh, Contra Costa County Match Care Commissioner and also the Summer City Economic Development Advisor Committee. And I'm a Rotarian and also serve the uh, leadership at Summer Valley Board. And of course, um, just like I introduced before, I'm the Apapa Bay Region President. And uh, just like Ian said, I'm a I came here about two years ago. And a few years after I came to the United States, after I more settled down, got a job, and uh, kind of pay off my debt, I started to think, should I live here as a guest and just wish someone take my ashes back to China? Or I live here, take this as my home, and then start to build it? Then I think, if I think I'm a traveler living here for the rest of my life, it will be miserable. So it's better I take this, the American, as my home. In order to take as a home, you need to build a community. So I start to work on here, there, different organization until 2003. And I joined Rotary, and I found a lot of good friends there, and uh, learned a lot. And uh, 2014, with a few good friends, we started a Papa Travel Chapter. And uh, now uh, Travel Chapter is one of the most active uh, chapter among all 24 chapters in Apapa. Uh, for me, I think after serving the community, be the community leader, very active, the biggest gain for me is I feel is I'm more homely in California in Sermon. Because in the past, I tell other people, I can go anywhere in the United States. As long as there's a good job, I'll stay there. But now I more feel, okay, Ceremony is my home, California is my home. So I think this is a big benefit or big lesson you can learn by serving the community. You feel more rooted here, connected here. Thank you guys. You guys have an amazing background. So let me ask the, like the foundation. I have like Dan, Dan I think invited me because I do, have been doing community work for the last 26 years never really stood for any elections or anything. And U.S. has a very bad, good history of 250 years of democracy. So there, I've noticed that two really people like to know when you say civic leadership, community leadership, is there a difference? Is it the same? What should the kids, how can they get clarity and what should be the doing? Can you address that? Um, for me, um, community service or civic service, I think it's important it's getting involved. Whether you're helping your city, you'll be a part of a youth commission, or you're volunteer for any kind of organization, I think the most important thing is just to be part of this community, to be involved, to have your voice heard. So to me, I think it's all kind of uh, blend in for, for civic service or community service. Well, I, I think your question goes to trying to differentiate civic versus community. So let me, let me see if I can try it this way. Um, in local government, we're all about um, fixing the infrastructure we need and, and creating the rules by which we can make you know, our roads work, our airports work, uh, that we, we bring police services and water safety, all these things that our residents expect. And the, the basis of, of a great local government or, or civic uh, involvement and leadership are really having to do with making sure that democracy functions. So um, people who are engaged and informed in what's going on, uh, and they're the, the most vital instrument there are, are people who bother to educate themselves in the free press is an integral part of uh, democracy. So we need people to understand what the issues are. We need people to engage with their local government. 
Um, change is brought when uh, I think people in the community see a need and are activists. Um, and then there are people on the inside that listen to them, and together they can make mountains. They can move mountains together. It's really hard if uh, I'm a civic leader and I'm trying to change something that's personally interesting to me, but it's not to the community. It doesn't really work. Uh, likewise, if uh, elected officials aren't responsive right, to the public that they serve, that doesn't work much well either. But I would say... Um, you know, community leadership, on the other hand, takes many forms. Uh, you have people that have an interest in the work of government and, and the kinds of issues we deal with in government, but you also have people um, <clears throat> that are trying to do wonderful things in their community um, in various ways, and uh, the, the kind of volunteerism that, that comes to the fore there um, is important. And I think whether, you know, you young folks uh, who have spoken tonight or others um, decide you want to be involved in, in being part of the government uh, as elected officials or to serve in a lifelong career in government or you want to serve in the private sector, um, everybody ought to be looking for things that they can do in the community because after all, right, we, uh, when we build community, we help each other uh, build something higher and get beyond our individual selves, our selfishness, if you will, to um, do something do something greater. So civic involvement and the community, community involvement. I'll just give you one example. Look at Florida high school uh, shooting issue. It used to be as usual. You know, the whole nation sad, everybody feel bad but no action, okay? But this time it's different. The difference is because the, the high school, their students walk out of the classroom, they say no more. They take action and that's community involvement. And because their action, they talk to the, uh, the legislature in Florida. So Florida just passed uh, the measure to, uh, con to have the gun safety law now. And you know Florida is a red state. Red state means Republican control. It means N NRA is really control them. Okay. You know, if you don't know what NRA is, National Rifle Association, to pass a law for gun safety in the red state is almost impossible. But because those students' involvement, and because not only those students, other students in other areas also walk out of it the classroom. So that make all the news attention in the United States. So if you get involved, and I can predict, if most students, high school students around the country really walk out of the room say, no more. We don't tolerate any more gun violence in school. And that will make a difference. Okay. And besides that, in my opinion, that will make those students a good resume to go to the good school, I believe, right? I think for me, I always believe uh, lead by serve. You need to serve the community, serve the people, and then you become the leader. I think it's uh, you first get involved into the community, serve the community, work with the community, become a community leader. Then there's when things happens, you want to raise your voice and get involved into a government, then you may become a civic leader. There's no clear line between civic leader and uh, community leader. Uh, I can share with you my personal experience. I serve in the Rotary and I help a lot of the community with the community and uh, when there's opportunity comes, uh, the city has some vacancy for the appointment position, I just uh, talk with the mayor and say, hey, I would like to get involved. He said, oh, great. And then I can help you to get appointed. So, you know, if I'm not involved in the community, help the community, I mean, I don't think he will give me that opportunity. Also, this time it's the same. There is the opportunity for the community college a board in Contra Costa County because I serve a long time there. People know me. People encourage me to come out to run for this seat. And uh, 
let me tell you one story. There is a uh, the lady named uh, uh, Cassie Shiverton. She is the executive director of Discovery Council. She their organization provide a mental health service to the community, uh, especially the elementary and the middle school. At the beginning of the year, we had a meeting, and uh, she was very excited. She told me, "Hey, Andy, you know what? I met Mike at、uh, DVC Community College." And、uh, she told me, "You need to let your community know. Community college is a great way. You can still go to、uh, like university,、uh, UC Berkeley or UCLA is at the top-notch university, and you don't need to be that stressful." He's talking and talking at that time. I was just smiling and nodding. At the end, I told her, "You know what? I totally agree with you. This is why I'm running for that community college board." Immediately, he, she told me. I'll support you. I'll open my house for your fundraising, and I'll join your campaign team. So this is kind of grow very naturally. It's not like overnight you become a civic leader. Thank you. In a democracy, you need the yin and the yang kind of thing. Like you need the community leaders as well as the civic leaders, who sometimes work together, sometimes they collide. Then the best thing comes out for the democracy. So it's both are equally important, but. You can figure out how you want to transverse your own personal ambitions and into leadership. Yeah. So, so I just also wanted to ask the young kids:、uh, Do you、uh, do you have any questions for these leads, leaders? And do you also understand the definition of a civic leader? Oh, you know, you can ask them. What do you want? Your clarity on the leadership. Okay, sorry about that.、Uh, so my question can be answered by any of you.、Uh, have you ever had difficult moments in your job, and if so, how did you push through and not give up? Yes, I do a lot. <laughs> the worst one is, is、uh, because of development issue in Cupertino, you know, Buvaco issue. As a mayor, a year, year about two years ago, I was the mayor. And I was poor development, okay? Because if you don't allow the development to make it more efficient, run the carbon to cut down the carbon、uh, emission, you know, as we know, whether you know global climate change is on the way, unless we do that, it's not going to make it work. So that's the main reason I'm for poor development. But then there's this group, a small group in Cupertino, they're against. Any development, so they make up the story. So they recall me, and they use、uh, fake news to attack after attack. As you know, fake news. Our our president is very good at it. Okay, so but this group is the same, very good at it. So they say I'm corrupt. FBI is investigating me, and the district attorney is investigating me, and I I I was going to get. Go to jail pretty soon, and that's why they need to recall me. Okay, but all in no, you know, I want to say if they if they go to jail, they don't need recall you. You will lose your mayorship right there, right? But it's not true. It's not fact. I'm still here. Not any FBI letter, district attorney letter. But you have to believe in yourself. If you do the right thing, as I say, do the right thing. Okay, every step you take. Will have impact, small or big. Okay, look at World War Two. It started from Hitler, and he was very popular in Germany at that time, right? Or、oh, people held, yeah, whatever,、well, long time ago, right? So, <laughs> okay, so you may have heard that housing and transportation are a big deal here. These are really, really hard problems because some people, honestly, as Barry said, don't want to grow, right? Um, well, in our our community in, in Cupertino, home prices, median home prices, are now reached two point two million dollars. San Jose, one point one million. Sunnyvale, one point eight million. Okay. Now, imagine you're a new teacher and you come to Silicon Valley and you want to teach. 
You've heard that the Fremont Union High School District, which serves parts of Santa Clara, Sunnyvale, Cupertino, West San Jose, is an excellent district. In fact, teachers recently surveyed said 68% of them are very satisfied with their employment with the district. But they make between 63 and 110 some thousand dollars, and it's really hard to afford to live here. So obviously it's if it's half as expensive to live in San Jose, that may be what you do, but you may have to live even further out. <clears throat> Working regionally to solve these problems is by far the most vexing, challenging thing, especially transportation. And you just can't give up. You've got to keep going. When people won't hang together, you still got to keep up. You can't, you can't give up. Here's what teachers told us recently. 56% of them are going to leave employment with the district, they say, within six years. Now, if that's not a crisis for our community, which puts such a high value in public education, I don't know what is. But these problems take years to solve, and we've just got to make progress on them every week, every month every year okay so the message is don't give up that's a good message well you heard us two uh, mayors and former mayor and talk about uh, uh, how you deal with a, a crisis but for um, a community member or you know uh, um, serving on the commission or on the board uh, a lot of times you will hear different perspectives um, but you have to Believing what you you know what you think is right for the community, um, be courteous, be respectful, but be firm, and be courageous. Sometimes you make a stand. Definitely. Good. Absolutely. I just want to speak quick, and uh, this is uh, what I learned when I to get uh, really involved. Uh, I remember Harry in uh, told me that uh, if not attacked. That means you are. You didn't do a good job. So don't be afraid. They attack you is normal. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's why I'm still here, right? <laughs> Next question. All right. So, um, so my question is that um, it's not targeting anyone, but just asking that um, when you guys were like in your age of 14, 15, have you ever thought about being serviced in a community or um, doing what you are doing right now? Uh, okay, to be frank with you, if you ask me like uh, five years ago, have you ever think about uh, getting appointed, running for a seat? I will tell you, never in my life. So it's uh, all happened, it's not overnight, it all happened gradually. You just serve the community, and then you see things, people may come to you, ask you, and uh, you may feel this is the opportunity, you jump on it, and, uh, but one thing I want to remind you is you have to have the passion to do it. If you have the passion, go for it, and uh, just to serve the community, like I said before, leap by serve. So you serve the community when the opportunity come, just uh, take it. No, when I was 15, I was working in the field in Taiwan, in the village, okay. I came from a poor farmer's house in Taiwan. So try to make it the taste and meat. You just have to help out the family to do the chore you know, to taking care of ox. We have an ox to help Gong Pie. I plow the field, so I have to help taking care of the cow. So I never think about anything. When I lie down on the uh, graveyard on the ground, look at the sky and I saw the uh, airplane fly by, I said, oh, that would be good if one day I can be up there. Never thought it. So I came to this country when I was 25, and then uh, even now, my wife say, you are different than when I was, when I married you. <laughs> you are not getting into the party. You did not tell me you were going to get into the party. If I knew, I'm not going to marry you, okay? <laughs> Mary, you're hysterical, and I would observe that you're still herding cows, right? Okay. 
So I guess when I was 14 or 15, um, government wasn't so very popular. There was this guy in the presidency in the White House named Richard Nixon, and Watergate was going on, you know, the, the Vietnam War, it was a really negative time in the country. And I think many of us feel uh, we also have a lot of regrets about who's sitting in the White House today and all the stuff that comes on, the tweets that explode in the morning, I can hardly turn on the news. But I will tell you that uh, over the long span of your lives, you can have several careers. I was thinking about being a physicist or a musician or an engineer when I was 14 or 15. I ended up uh, becoming an engineer and being here in Silicon Valley doing engineering product uh, management, developing products uh, for 30 years. And then I said, hey, how else can I help my community? And decided that uh, getting elected would be fun, interesting, and different. So you don't have to stick with one thing. If you get a broad education at a liberal arts college, um, for example, that I can recommend. That's the first place I went, and then I came out here to Stanford. Uh, you, you can choose to do lots of things, and you don't have to, you know, uh, you don't have to end up where you started. Uh, experts say you might have two or three or four or five uh, different, quite different careers through your lifespan. Well, when I was uh, 14 or 15, I don't think I'm as I was as half informed as you guys are at this age. Um, I, I, I don't think, you know, back then there's so much about knowledge of what's going on, you know, be, besides, you know, what we do at the school. Um, definitely I would never thought about going to um, either you call company service or running for city council. Um, special, my family uh, mostly are engineers. My parents were engineers. My brother is an engineer. So, Normally, you know, parents always, special Chinese families, they always want you to be either be an engineer or doctor or lawyer. So I, I did follow my parents' footsteps to be an engineer, but definitely I also uh, very much interested in politics and got involved in um, serving our community. So this is, uh, yeah, never in my wild dream of uh, thinking and becoming so active in, in our community. Let, let me tell you something. This guy is Stanford graduate, okay? master's degree, start up a couple successful company in high-tech business, but I recruit him to run for the city council. <laughs> I blame you, Barry. That's correct. Yeah? I know. The last question for the kid from there. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Uh, uh, what, what do you think is the best community service that you can do, like picking up trash or something like that? <laughs> Yes. Uh, follow your passion, what your interests are. I think, uh, you know, if you think, it, you know, save the world, you know, it's the world to be a, you know, greener world, maybe it's picking up the trash. It's just what you care about. I think it's always, always follow your heart, follow your passion to do what you think is important to you. Uh, you know, that was so well spoken. I would say... You might have a career, a way of making money, of providing financial stability for you and your family. That doesn't mean that you can't also, and even in a young age, and even while you're still in school, even when you're in college, and even when you're a young adult, that you can't find some vehicle to serve your community. You got to find something that really floats your boat, right? That makes it all worthwhile for you. Um, you have to have uh, a passion. But there are so many great ways to get engaged in community building in the world. So um, think about a life where you do both, where you have a career. Maybe it directly fulfills your passion for community service, maybe as, as a teacher might. But you might also find that um, you have time, you can make time to serve your community as well as have a fulfilling career. Such a good question. How are you? <laughs> All right. Uh, do what you like to do. Any involvement, you have to enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, there's no fun. So working on it and also get some fun of it because life is too short. No, you may not understand, but my age, <laughs> you may understand. <laughs> When you get over 50, then you will understand life is too short, but you don't. Okay, 
So if you cannot get it, if you cannot enjoy, why do it, right? So I enjoy the politics every minute. Even I got recall, you know, attempt. Okay. <laughs> I think I totally agree with them. Follow your heart, follow your passion, and uh, you know sometimes you may not have that passion. Just try it, and uh, you may find it's totally different. Like for me, you can't imagine. In the past, I was uh, more introvert. I still remember the story my Rotary Club told me. That was the third or second time I attend the Rotary Club meeting. My president told me, "Hey, Andy, I know you know me." Talk with someone you don't know. Start from there. I start to talk with people I don't know. I learn a lot, and uh, now I think when I talk with people, I'm more comfortable sitting here. It's not like very nervous. So just follow a passion. Also, don't forget to explore a certain things. Try it. If you don't like, that's okay. Then you try different thing. Uh, this is a question for all of you. If you like to answer, so since our president Paul our country out of the Paris Agreement, what do you think is gonna be the biggest um like hardest part on reducing greenhouse gas? What's the, what's going to be the hardest part of reducing greenhouse gases? And in the context of the president pulling out of the Paris Accords, um, well, I, I will I will acknowledge that it is very difficult, you know, uh, to to contemplate a future where our coastal areas, even here in Santa Clara County, will probably be inundated um, by floods. So the businesses and even the wastewater treatment plant and other other assets we have along the coast here could be uh, flooded. We're going to have to spend a lot of money. Whose money, whose pockets is it going to come from? Yours. Uh, to fix this problem. And so, you know, in my view, we ought to, we ought to be tre treating this like the crisis it is. Being in denial about what science is telling us is, is nonsense. Um, and so we're going to have to double down and work all the harder. I appreciate Governor Brown's efforts, the state's efforts, everything we can do locally, we've all got to do our part because at the end of the day, climate change isn't something that Washington created, right? Climate change is what you and, and I are doing in, our, in the choices we make. If we're, you know, we go out tomorrow and need a new car and buy um, a car that consumes a lot of gas, as opposed to an EV, we're making a choice that'll last for the lifetime of that car. So I think, quite frankly, as upset as I am, I can't really do much about the current administration at the moment. What I can do something about are my own actions and, and what we do as cities and what we do as individuals to make choices and demand for energy. I talked about Silicon Valley clean energy before. We now have transformed our electricity, right, from having a fair amount of carbon to having no carbon in uh, 11 soon to be 12 cities in this, in this county. Um, the next thing we can do is, uh, the next big opportunity beyond that is to transform transportation. So start using electricity instead of fossil fuels. Yeah, that's a very tough question, a good question too. Uh, I think the toughest one is the uh, Changing the habit of the people, okay, even myself, okay, um, have to change it from driving the car to driving the uh, EV, okay. So uh, I, I got follow him. I bought it. I released a uh, vote. So last few, last three years, I probably put in the gas tank about five times a year. So compa in comparison, almost every week I have to. I have to refill my tank with the regular gasoline car. So that's different. And my, my lease is up, you know, I just got a notice. So I'm thinking going to just go the biking, use a bicycle, of course, it will be much harder now, okay. Uh, so I went out by a bike, bike lock, okay. Get a bike lock first, so then 
by June I will be start pedaling, <laughs> but that's the hardest part. I just want to add real quick. I think this is such a big topic. I'm not sure I know the answer, but I, I think um, for the green energy, um, for one, I think the, the newer technology will definitely help the Earth become a greener. Uh, with electric, you know, electrical vehicle, energy storage, this is new technology that will help us become a better, I guess, it's make the, uh, the Earth greener. And also um, for us, uh, and uh, we can each, you know, take a part to try to be greener to help this Earth. And I think it's going to take a lot of uh, policymakers and a lot of uh, people to discuss and how we're going to achieve that. And also going to be relying on you guys. Yeah. Hopefully, you guys will come up with a new technology, breakthrough technology, and and, and uh, help us solve all the problems. I think you're the future. We need to leave a good environment for all of you. And for us, we can do from a small part, just like at home during the winter, turn the air conditioner down on one degree, maybe during the summer turn it up on one degree. I mean, I'm not good at the, like the international policy or the national policy, but I, for me, I more trust those scientists. I trust uh, whatever they deliver to me and uh, using my judgment and uh, just follow whatever they suggested. Thanks, All right. So thank you so much, guys. And thank you, kids. Amazing questions. You really stumbled them a couple of times. <laughs> so good job. <laughs> thank you.